Hey, good morning. Uh, thanks for joining us for our webinar on Formula E, Pushing the Needle in Electric Transportation. My name is Sam Shanfarber. I'll be moderating a panel today. Uh, we've got a couple of great speakers lined up for you. And with that, we'll get going. Uh, so a little bit about Forth and who we are. Uh, so Forth is a nonprofit trade association. Uh, essentially, we work to advance electric shared and smart mobility. And we're active in four main areas, policy advocacy, industry growth and development. We do direct consumer engagement uh, projects much like this. And we do demonstration and pilot projects as well. I'd like to introduce our panelists for you today. So today we're joined by Stephanie Medeiros, who is an e-mobility professional with over 14 years of engineering, uh, innovation and leadership experience in North America and around the world. She's been involved in the technology integration and collaboration opportunities with the ABB Formula E ecosystem, where the ABB Formula E is a natural fit between two pioneers at the forefront of the latest electrification and digital technologies. Uh, Stephanie, unfortunately, has some technical issues and is joining us via phone, so you may not see her today. Um, we're also here with Eric Ernst, who's the Director of Technology for Formula E. Eric's responsible for all technology used within the championship, which requires his vision and involvement across almost every department within Formula E. Uh, in terms of how this is going to work for you as an attendee, you can submit your comments and questions through the attendee chat box. And I'm now going to move over to allow Eric to speak a little bit more about Formula E. Um, and I'll let him get started. Hi, Sam. Hi. Hope you can hear me. Hello, everyone. And um, thanks for having me on, on board here um, presenting this Formula E to you. Um, usually I ask the question, who knows a Formula E? And I get a couple of hand raised. And some people then come and ask me if um, if uh, Falando Alonso is a good driver within Formula E. So um, that is it's not the case. Formula E is, um, is very close to Formula One, but we're a very different sport. And you know, I hope that some of you have already heard of us, so probably even come to one of the races. Um, so if we look at what Formula E and kind of what the purpose of us was, and we'll get into the story of it a little bit later is, um, the purpose of Formula E is to accelerate sustainable human progress through the power of electric racing. So our vision or the vision of our of our founder, Alejandro Agat, was that we needed a new championship at a very high level, at FIA ranking, where we can showcase electric car racing, sustainable electric car racing, and bring electric cars back to, uh, or not back, but to the human a um, uh, human element where people find it normal electric cars to see electric cars in the city. And that goes by using the power of sport by going to key iconic cities and showcasing how quick and how electric cars fit into those spaces. So there's a lot of work been going on. This is, we're starting season seven in a few weeks. And, um, it's been a massive um, success so far, which uh, we hope to to bring on. One of the recent announcements that we've done, because sustainability is obviously big on our flag, is that we're the world's first net zero carbon sport. So we have offset all our carbon footprint since the beginning of the championship, creating this uh, great narrative that we are very serious about sustainability and we're very serious about our message and our purpose that we do have. So key in our DNA of uh, Formula E is uh, street racing, so middle street circuits. We very, very rarely go to, to fix circuits um, at the moment. It is just uh, in Mexico where we go there. Otherwise, we're really key to take a city center like Paris, what you see here, for those of you who've been lucky enough to go to Paris, there's this uh, Les Infalides in the middle, um, a hard piece of Paris. And we change a two kilometer, two and a half kilometer part of the city normal roads into a grade two racetrack. Um, 
this is not without any um, effort. So there's obviously a massive logistical challenge with the concrete blocks that we bring for the protection of, of the infrastructure and the cars, um, uh, entire media network, uh, TV production, garages. It's a massive um, operation to get something like this going. But it's very iconic because we bring the racing to the people. We really are not a huge fan of going out to a circuit and then have everyone come and see us. We want to come to the people. We want families to bring their kids. Obviously, the cars are very quiet, so you don't have to wear ear protection. You can go around, take a seat, uh, go to the e-village and interact and, and start understanding what electric mobility is about, understand how electric cars sound and how high-performance electric cars sound, which is what we're um, racing with at the moment. So if we look, and apologies, this slide is not the best for you. It's a bit white on gray. I just see here, um, we are a really global brand and we have a very global uh, calendar, as you can see. So these are all the destinations we've been in the last six seasons. And uh, many of these are repeats every year. So um, the, the Paris, the Berlins, the Romes are in New York. Those are some key elements that we go back to in the, in the Asian room as well. So we've been to a lot of places, South America, uh, Santiago de Chile is a, is a key one. And we've been to some very, very special places like uh, Sanya in China. Um, we are starting in, um, in Riyadh, uh, in Saudi Arabia in a, in a few weeks. So there's it's a really um, global championship. We have now season seven, we are world championship um, accredited, which gives our reach even bigger. So it's a funny story how it all started. And this is a bit taken from kind of the social media meme where they talk about how something went and, and how something is going. And it kind of wants to showcase the success that we've been at. So the the story how this all started was with a, um, a dinner between the FIA, current FIA president, Jean Tot, and Alejandro Agat in a very famous Parisian restaurant called La Stresa, where they spoke about this, 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 this situation of not having a, um, a sport entity or a racing circuit where sustainability would be a center point of it, that um, a lot of brands are questioning or, or having problems putting their money behind a, um, a sport which is has a, has a pollutive effect, is not very green, and that there is a need for maybe something electric. And it, in, in the evening ended with Alejandro riding on a, on, a, on, a, on a napkin here, as you see, that he will organize a, um, and, and, and be the organizer of electric car championship, and John Dodd signed that he will support it. Um, and that's kind of how it all started. Um, the legend then goes that, not a legend, it's a true story, that then goes that Alejandro kind of walks out of the restaurant and says, okay, well, I've got this napkin now, but I don't have a car, I don't have a championship, um, I've not one sponsor, and now we've got to start from zero. And um, then later in Beijing 2014 was the first race, and here we are today. So, so this is how it started, and if we're seeing of where we are, how it's going, we are probably one of the um, very few championships with the most manufacturers um, in, the, in the world at the moment. So you see there's some very big names here, some of the names that are also in other big championships like Formula One. Some of them have been very close to us. And we also, because of the way we have the regulation set, is a very competitive field as well. So um, for example, there's no aerodynamic um, development, there's no battery development at the moment, which keeps the costs at a very limited level. So we do have a lot of very uh, changing results. So there's not a whole bunch of um, the same teams and same drivers constantly winning. So it's, it's a very diverse kind of championship in terms of how the results look and who wins championships, which makes it for really great viewing also on television. If we look at the vehicle that we use, the car, we are now currently in the generation two phase. And the generation one car, which you see here um, on the on, on your probably on your left side, um, was 
something that you know out of the situation grew we they had we had to get a car um electrify it basically make it a single seater and then get on tracks and try how it goes and when this all started as you can see from the battery capacity we could not actually run the full race so there was a situ there are situations until season five started where drivers had to switch cars in between races so they're literally driving to the pit lane um, park the car jump into a new car and take the rest uh, of the of the course with them so there was the car swap when we then moved to the generation two car which is the currently one car that we're using now in that time we kept the 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 battery capacity at, and we doubled the battery capacity at a, at a similar battery weight level um, which obviously was a, was a great story for us because we went went from half the cars um, on and on the grid but half the cars that we had to transport around the world so that was a really great success and we brought a whole, a whole new bunch of innovations into the championship as well so the gen Ku car was kind of a step where we went away from a car who looked like a very similar um different kind of uh, other championships which are already racing to something which was really iconic formula e and no other cars actually looked like this so it was kind of a true setting us there as um as an innovator um and what were different things that we brought was the generation two car and we had fan boost with generation one is that we're very conscious about obviously the the focus group and the people watching watching the racing and you know these these people that uh, watch us the viewership are people who who um you know are into gaming uh, people who are uh, who, who like electric cars or probably thinking about getting an electric car and it was key for us to to give this sport a different kind of twist so really trying to get the end user involved with it so fan boost was one of the things that we invented and brought in from season one on which was a voting mechanism where you can vote for your favorite driver up to six minutes into the race. And that driver then receives in the race the possibility to boost his battery output for um, uh, 1,000 kilojoules during the race. So it's like if you, depending on, on what, what age you are, if you're my age, you probably remember Night Rider and the turbo boost um, where you could push a button and go really quick for a short time. This is basically what happens here. So the driver has a button on the steering wheel and then can either use the maximum power really short or then over a longer time increase his power output a little bit more. So that's something we still do today. So if you go to our website or you use our app, the fan boost voting starts, I think it's now four days before the race. You choose your favorite driver, you give him a vote, and then six minutes into the race, the voting is finished and a driver um, is then announced to be um, which will become or who we get the, the fan boost for the race. And there's the first five drivers that get it. Attack mode is something we brought in with the Gen 2 car. And what attack mode is, is a, it's a different innovation. Again, giving the driver the possibility to add more battery output um or, or opening up the battery output to the to his motor so there is a zone in every racetrack which is on the slower race line as you see here in this example in santiago when the driver passes this zone he gets an extra 35 kilowatt of output added to his battery for a duration of four minutes so it means that he probably goes through here, he probably loses a position, as you see these, this guy here probably lost the position, was overtaken. But now he's gonna come from behind with a lot more power than this guy currently has for four minutes. So again, if you like, if you know Super Mario, it's like when you drive over a mushroom and you get an extra boost. Drivers need to take this zone twice a race, so they need to go, which makes obviously very interesting situations and overtaking. And because we don't have a pit stop, because there's, a, there's no refueling and no tire changes, we had to add something to a strategic element into the racing itself to make it interesting. Otherwise, it would just be a flat out race. Um, the halo lights up in a color, giving an indication to other drivers that this um, driver is in attack mode. 
and for the viewers as well as they see a car going past the halo lighting up in a magenta color means that the driver is currently under um, attack mode driver's eye is um, another innovation that is unique to formula e and that is a camera within the driver's helmet so it's not a on the visor it's actually in inside the um the fitting of the driver and what it gives you it gives you a really unique view of what the driver is doing and how his head movement is so other than an onboard camera it really helps you to kind of understand um you know the, the physical presence and the, and the physical um endurance that a driver needs to do in these cars going on the track how nervous the track is and all the different controls that the driver actually uses on the car because essentially with an electric car as you know you know there's regeneration um, there's braking there's coasting this this these drivers they need to regenerate a certain amount of energy to finish the race so they're essentially driving a power plant so it's, it's quite a complicated racing vehicle to drive because the driver needs to decide between how much battery he's going to use how much he's going to regenerate depending on his tactics and what's going on around them and this view gives you a really great indication on what's going on around the driver so with that we obviously have a, a really great um group of of um brands with us um it's it's grown over the years and seen some very um great names that have been us from from day one obviously with a bit of a segue to your uh, next panelist um, abb is, is our main partner when within the formula e um a family bring obviously a great amount of technology into the race for us and is a very interesting partner to to have um in a, in a sporting property like ourselves so it, it makes it really interesting obviously also for me from technology to look at the ABB innovations and see how we can actually utilize them um, within our championship, which is obviously um, some very challenging building these race circuits within the middle of cities. So just to kind of a segue to, to um, Stephanie, our next race, if you, um, if you have time, uh, next race is on the 26th, 27th of Saudi Arabia. Uh, 26th of February in Saudi Arabia. It is a night race for the first time ever. Um, and you know, if you check on our website where to watch, you can see where you can watch it um, wherever you are at the moment, if that's in the US or in Canada or in Europe. Um, it's, it makes a great viewing. It's a 45 minute race. Uh, there's a lot going on and it's definitely worth um, having a peek at it and, and having an enjoyment with that. So yeah, I think that's it for me. Eric, thanks so much, man. It's, it's such a great overview of how the series works. Uh, certainly excited to hear about these innovations and very eager to see what the first night race is going to look like in Saudi Arabia. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull us back to Stephanie's slides um, and would love to hear from her and ABB as well. And Stephanie, please just let me know as you'd like us to move through these slides and happy to help you out. Can you hear us okay? I can hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, absolutely. Please have at it. Perfect. Great. Thank you. Um, great that Eric gave that uh, overview of, form, of ABD Formula E and a good segue to, to my presentation. So uh, to everyone, definitely apologize for the technical difficulties. As you see, I'm only calling in and you're not getting the full presentation and the full video experience. But uh, nonetheless, uh, great to be here and talk about ABD Formula E. It's definitely a topic that I love talking about. Um, so in this part of the presentation, I'll focus on the, the partnerships between ABB and Formula E, uh, also touch upon the technology integrations that Eric hinted at, um, and then for all the, the viewers, you know, really go through how that translates to e-mobility that you and I can have in our everyday lives. So next slide, please. ABB is a, it's a large leading uh, technology company, and so we have technology solutions from you know, products, systems, integrated services, and software. 
And really the aim is to energize the transformation of society and achieve a more productive and sustainable future. And overall make the world a better place for, for all of us to live in. That's really the, the, the core mission uh, for ADD. The company itself has a history of over 130 years um, and has a lot of experience, uh, has operations in over 100 countries in all parts of the world uh, and up to uh, actually over 110,000 employees worldwide. Next slide, please. Sustainability, you know, we talk a lot about sustainability. You're going to hear that word a lot. Uh, it's definitely a focus for, for ABD as well. You know, at ABD, we see the value of making sustainable choices and really embedding this into everything we do every day. So what you see on this slide is uh, ABD's 2030 sustainability target, uh, an overview of that. And as you can see on the right hand side, the target, we reduce greenhouse gas emissions. That's one of the four pillars of sustainability. And that's again, really key for ABD. Uh, close to 60% of ABD's revenues come from technologies that reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, technology, there's various technologies in the, in the portfolio and including of course, technologies like ABD's electric vehicle chargers. So that number is, is about 60% now, and there's, a, there's an aim also to grow that, and continue to grow that as much as possible. And we know that we can't do that by ourselves. Uh, you know, partnerships are really key here, and that's why you see partners listed at the top of the wheel. Uh, at ABB, we definitely know that partnerships, especially between the right players, are really key to creating success and making things happen. So it's definitely important to collaborate with partners who are like-minded and also share the same missions and goals. Uh, and in this case, make sustainability vision a reality. So if we go to the next slide, please. You've heard already Eric mention the, the purpose of Formula E and the mission of Formula E. You know, that, that anchor point there is sustainability. And that's definitely aligned with ABD's mission for, for sustainability. And essentially, you know, for if Formula E is out there to promote the electrification of transportation through motorsport and help in the fight against climate change, that's super aligned with ABD's visions and missions for a better world. So overall, it definitely made sense for ABD to partner with Formula E for a lot of reasons. Uh, it's a premier electric vehicle sports property. You've already heard uh, from Eric about uh, Formula E getting that tremendous, tremendous growth, and now it's called the a World Championship status, which is a very, very highly regarded. It also serves as a competitive pl platform to develop and test mobility uh, relevant technologies. So what's really exciting here is that the newest technologies in e-mobility are tested and being pushed to the limits right there on the racetrack. Then these technologies are brought into the mass market vehicles that you and I can have in our everyday vehicles. So that really helps in the acceleration of adoption of electric vehicles, which is again, super aligned with ABD's missions and what we're trying to do. Um, the, the race is also, they demonstrate the potential of urban mobility to the wide audience. Uh, we've already heard from Eric that these, the majority of these races happen in the city centers. So that's really, really key because, you know, the fact that these races are right in the heart of these cities and, you know, right in the middle of these cities and, and also in, in people's faces, you know, it really helps to amplify the sustainability message that we're going after and to get more people aware of climate change and its effects. Next slide. So overall, it's been a great partnership so far. AED has been the title uh, sponsor for the last three seasons. We're entering our fourth uh, right now. And announced last year uh, is that ABD is now the official, or will be the official charging partner. So it's definitely exciting to see from where this partnership started three seasons ago and to where it is today. And then also seeing the evolution of this partnership and also the technology integration. So obviously EV charging integration uh, technology into the races is very key and very important and exciting. And so generation three or the gen three car is currently being developed. And so ABD is at the table uh, with FIA and Formula E to develop this new generation of car. The car, the charger itself is in development. Uh, so the specifications and requirements are in development right now. 
and it's going to be a custom charger. Uh, you'll see that for ABB Formula E is quite a unique application. And so these chargers are going to be custom made, they'll be compact, and they'll meet the requirements for the races as well. Slide, please. So if we look outside of the cars and outside of the charging, uh, another really cool technology integration that ABB is currently providing is UPS systems. UPS stands for uninterruptible power supply. So these power supplies essentially guarantee that the power stays on in the broadcast center in the event of a bridge failure during the race. So that you know you really want to ensure that the live race live race broadcast never go off air. That's super important. And these charge these this equipment is also bespoke in a custom design because currently there is no standard that exists for applications such as Formula E for this equipment. And so the ABB team has really you know, worked hard to put together a design to meet the fast paced uh, global championship environment. This equipment is also small and robust. Uh, of course, the, the races travel everywhere in the world and so it's important that, the, that this equipment was designed to be small and robust to be shipped around the world and then it's also plug and play it also has a plug and play functionality and that really simplifies the installation for the on-site team because as i mentioned this equipment goes from site to, to site and from race to race all over the world so it was really key to have this plug and play functionality to make the installation as easy and as smooth. next slide please so ABB Formula E, you know, it's been mentioned before, it's a test bed for new technologies. And, you know, what's super exciting is that it's defining the future of e-mobility. When you watch an ABB Formula E race, you're really seeing the newest and latest technologies in e-mobility right there on the racetrack. Uh, so this is definitely the case for the technology that's inside of the car. There's lots of the improvements that come from the car on the racetrack to the road cars that are on the road, electric vehicles. And the same can be true also for the charging equipment. So outside of the car, when you look at charging, there's so many valuable improvements from ABB Formula E races that ABB can take into the chargers that are installed all around the world. Um, ABB chargers, you know, there's we have a lot of them installed, obviously. So we have uh, thousands and thousands installed all over the world um, in different parts of the world from hot climates cold climates, uh, extreme temperatures, and different types of altitudes as well. And so all these chargers that have been in, in installation over the last 10 years, you know, all that experience ABB has taken into account into the design for the chargers that you can see and you can go up to and plug your car today. So that's really important to, to, to have, you know, that data. So Formula E, of course, has its own unique it's its own unique application where charging happens at a fast-paced environment in different parts of the world. Uh, there's also changing energy sources. So these chargers can be connected to battery energy storage, uh, different grids in all types of the world, it, it, uh, different types of grids in, in different parts of the world. That includes also different stabilities of grids. Uh, so those are all, all things, or, or other sources as well. So those are all things to take into consideration when designing these chargers. Uh, also, the chargers in the Formula E environment, uh, same thing like UPS, they have to be compact and mobile, so they can be easily maneuvered, maneuvered within the team's garages. Um, if you have seen the team's garages, you'll see that real estate is kind of expensive in there, uh, and they're, they're quite effective with their real estate, real estate space. Um, so it's really important that these chargers are designed to be compact and mobile, and also they have to be shipped all around the world. So Overall, all these chargers, when they will be installed uh, and in an operation as of season nine, there's going to be lots of valuable data and improvements. Uh, and these will be taken into account to improve the future designs of ABB charger offering to the consumer market. Uh, that will go for our mobile chargers as well as stationary chargers uh, to make them even more reliable, robust, and safe for sure. Next slide, please. So overall, uh, it's been an incredible three seasons of this partnership, and we're definitely excited to see what's in the future and go along with this, this ride uh, with Formula E. 
So, you know, there's, again, so many things to be excited for as ADD Formula E continues to grow from where it first started on that napkin, like that, that Eric showed to where it is today, where there's millions of viewers worldwide, you know, lots of people attending in person. Um, so the larger that ADD Formula E gets and it grows, the more people are aware of climate change impacts and also the, lot, the larger positive impacts that the ADD Formula E spaces have on the world. So all of this is definitely very exciting. And you know, ADD Formula E, it's, it's, a, it's a race, but yeah, it's more than a race. It's definitely defining the future of e-mobility and making the world a better place for generations to come. Bye. Yeah, so that brings it uh, to the end. So looking forward to all the questions. Thank you very much, Stephanie. It's certainly inspiring to hear ABB's broader vision for this series. Um, and it's just such a cool partnership. So really excited to see moving forward, particularly looking at Gen 3, what new innovations are, are gonna come to the series as a result of this partnership. Um, so I would love to now kick it over to our panelists. I know we've got a ton of great questions that have come in. Uh, and I'll just get it rolling. So we have a note from Anne here asking, you know, who's watching these races? And are they typically uh, just crossovers from Formula One or are you seeing unique viewership as well? Uh, that's a really good question. And it's, it's, it's very, it's, I think it's a very diverse field of, of viewers. It is, it is probably a bit of a younger generation than Formula One. The races, there's a lot happening. You know, there's there's attack mode, there's fan boost. It's a 45 minute race plus one lap, so it's not just going around laps. Um, so that is, um, you know, I would say it's, you know, without don't quote me on numbers, but it's the the the, the 17 to 37 year olds that want to watch this. People that are thinking about what is the next car they're gonna buy? Is it gonna be electric? You know, seeing all these big cities starting to ban diesel and, and combustion engine cars, you know, they're starting to look at, okay, what does electric look like? Okay, maybe the Porsche Taycan is not something I can afford. Uh, and maybe a Tesla is out there is also a bit expensive. What are the other options, you know? And as I'm looking at, um, you know, the, the, the PS, PSA, so uh, the, the Peugeot and the Citroën, which is Tachita, double well, uh, double champion with us, uh, the Audis, the Mercedes, and, 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 and this, this drives a little bit their, um, their innovation or their motivation to, to select, you know, what they want to buy and, and, and what they want to use. Very cool. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, Eric. Thank you. Uh, and maybe for Eric and Stephanie both here. So, uh, Eric, who develops the batteries and electronics? And then, Stephanie, I'd love to hear what do the contributions look like from the ABB side? Right. So, if, if I speak about so the, the, the rule of the championship is that the manufacturers can really only bring an electric motor and inverter. And then there's endless software uh, development allowed in the rule. So that's kind of very high level of how the rule works. So there's no aerodynamics, no suspension, um, everything, all that is standard. We give them battery is one part of those. You know, if we would open up the battery to development, teams like Porsche and Mercedes would spend double digit millions trying to get another 5% out of a battery, um, which other privateer teams that we have could never throw that money at. So it wouldn't be a very sustainable championship long term so those are kind of the technical innovations that the manufacturers bring and you know um, um, rage efficiency is probably one of the biggest challenges that electric mobility has and that's why we want to focus on these manufacturers just making those electric motors in um, regeneration and gener and, and generation of, 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 of um, you know driving a, a car as efficient as possible in, in, in these racing situations, which are obviously high pressure situations. Thanks, Eric. And Stephanie, I, I know you got a little bit into this in your slideshow. Can you speak more about the contributions ABB has to the, the teams and cars themselves? 
Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're looking at ABB Formula E races in general, I already spoke about the UPS in my presentation and obviously the charging equipment. Uh, so there's already, there's also other uh, technology integrations currently being reviewed, either they're in discussion right now or they're being implemented. They're just not for, we can't publicly talk about it right now. Um, obviously when working on, on technology, especially with, with the teams, there's a lot of, uh, you know, confidential information, lots of NDAs, uh, because that's just the, the nature of it. But I, what, I, what I'll say is, you know, if we're looking at in general, the races, you know, that ABB's partnership with Formula E is basically both on, you know, both our visions and commitments to, to making, um, you know, the world a better place and having a sustainable future. So we're constantly looking within ABB's portfolio um, and ABB's technologies at what what solutions can be paired to um, there. Obviously, as I said, it's a, ABB is a large company. And so outside of charging and UPS, there's so many other areas that, that can definitely help or are helping as well, especially when we're looking at reducing environmental impact, uh, you know, saving energy, driving efficiency. That's really the core of, you know, all our areas within ABB are constantly innovating and developing technologies that advance in, in those sector, sectors. And so, yeah, there's lots in, in development. And so just uh, stay tuned for what the, the next technology development. So we have a question here asking, is the plan for Formula E to overtake or replace Formula One? Um, oh, well. Need, need need to be diplomatic on this question now. So look, there's there's um. We we are where we are because of Formula One. You know, Formula One has a massive heritage, seventy years of racing. They've 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 led on a lot of regulations and steps that we have built our championship upon, and I definitely foresee a future where both championships will be next to each other and they will coexist like in many other sports there's many different versions you know i come from a big background of sailing and um you know there's there's catamarans and flying monohulls now and everything and it all coexists um for different purposes so um formula one will always be there i think um it's it's a it's a key element of motorsports it's a key pillar and I think Formula E will do its its own way next to it. And, um, you know, there'll be crossovers, there'll be drivers, there'll be technology going back and forth. Um, at the moment, um, you know, we have the license to be a single seater, all electric series that belongs to us and no one can take that away from us. So um, that's, you know, for the next, I think, was it 20 years now, we're, gonna, <laughs> we're, we're safe. Very diplomatic answer indeed, Eric. Stephanie, I know you've been working on the Gen 3 chargers, and we have a question here. Do you have thoughts about inductive charging in the future? Inductive charging. Yeah, that, that can be that can be interesting. Um, I guess, you know, what I mentioned is that the, the charging is being developed right now for, for Gen 3. Um, and so inductive charging is, is not high on the list of what the actual charger is going to look like. So that's not something that's on the table right now, but maybe for, for future generations, because yeah, the, the car, what's great about Formula E is that it, it's, it's constantly evolving. You know, Eric showed already generation one, and just from generation one to generation two, there was so many advancements there. And obviously from generation two to generation three, there's gonna be so, so many advancements. And we're always looking, and especially Formula E, is always looking at what the new technologies are out there. So maybe the, the landscape will change by generation four, generation five. And so it's, it's really hard to say right now, oh, no, that's not going to be an option. Or definitely it will be an option because who knows? You know, there's a lot of different changes that are going to happen in, in the market. And so that can be an option for sure. That's so exciting to think about where this could go. And kind of on the same vein, and this question is for either of you, Eric or Stephanie, what innovations to date, if any, have transferred to consumer EVs from Formula E?
Well, I, I, I know from a software perspective, a lot of, of the manufacturers have what they learned from racing within Formula E have directly transformed their software onto road cars. So I know that from Tichita, which works with PSA, with Citroën, Peugeot, um, Renault, and Nissan as well. Um, I know from Audi and, and you know, Mercedes, not that long with us yet, but Audi is, um, they've taken that already back. We had a support series uh, last season, which was the Jaguar I-Pace support series, which was raced next to us uh, between qualifying. Um, I know just by them putting their road car onto our tracks and racing them at that level um, got them to change their softwares and bring out a more battery performance, which went straight to the consumer over on the over the air updates. So, um, you know, uh, an, another example is from from in generation one, we got 30 percent battery efficiency just out of software updates, which just by putting that car on the track and racing it for a few seasons. So um, so software is is the new gold, you know, it's always battery, you're stuck to the elemental uh, table of elements, you know, that's about as far as you can go with battery development, you know, on a very high level, I'm not a battery developer, but that's the way I look at it. With software, there's a lot of things you can do where in the little bits you can get that efficiency out. And I think that's where there's still a lot to be, to be, to be won by just you know understanding the how traffic is going to work, how drivers react to just to make it as efficient as possible. Yeah, and I'll add here, I'll add there as well that I, what I found um, very very impressive, uh, you know, in talking to the teams about how this technology on the cars translates to the mass market electric vehicles is is the timing. You know, if you look at other uh, motorsports. Um, the timing of improvements, implementations into the mass market vehicles, it, it takes quite a while. But what I've seen in discussions is that the the translation of improvements from ro- racetrack to the road was in a, as little as like two to five years. So that turnaround is, is very, very impressive when you compare that to other motorsports. And that's definitely exciting. Stephanie, I'm curious about that. So compared to other motorsports, the transition to, you know, potential consumer technology is very fast. What about transition from traditional testing methodology? Is it faster coming from Formula E? I I think, you know, when you start talking about testing methodology, you know, when you want to get a, a product, especially if it's a mass market or a commercial charger, that's going to be used in different applications around the world. And um, you know, you wanna make it as safe and reliable as possible. Uh, so that testing protocols that are in place, I wouldn't necessarily say that it's faster in Formula E, but the nature and the environment of ABD Formula E races is, and, and also the fact that it, it's a kind of a brand new application or a, a charging application um, especially when you're looking at, you know, it's going to be a new vehicle, a vehicle that, you know, w- with a different type of battery. And so all of that paired together, if you're looking at the, the environment as a whole, it's just super new. And so all that information that we get is going to be super important to take that back to our, our mass market electric chargers around the world. That makes a lot of sense, Stephanie. Uh, so how fast does the special Formula E charger charge and when will we see that available to the public? Yeah, so I can, I can start. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll start. Um, so as I said, this is all being worked out right now in terms of the specifications and everything is, is really con- being confirmed right now. So I think that uh, maybe you've already seen it in the news that uh, that ABD has already published that the chargers are going to be uh, charged with two times 80 kilowatts. So the chargers, the rate is going to be 80 kilowatts, and it's going to be able to charge two cars at the same time. So that that we know. Um, then there's other information that you probably had, uh, you've heard in the news about you know much faster type charging. 
So, I mean, at, at this point, it's not, it's not set in stone yet. So there's a lot of, you know, different things and different uh, uh, variations that we can look at. But I guess today, you know, the, the rules aren't published yet. And so that's definitely something to, to look out for. And uh, it, it's going to be exciting. Whatever it's going to be, I know it's going to be exciting. Yeah, definitely. Eric, for clarity, are these all-wheel drive cars or two-wheel drive? Two-wheel drive. Thanks. So they only have one one MGU, and um, there's talk about maybe putting another MGU on another axle, but maybe just for regeneration purposes, not um, not for not for driving purposes. So changing gears a little bit here, guys. Pardon the pun. Um, thinking about involvement from both other manufacturers and of individuals in formula e we have a couple of questions about are there any female drivers and has a women's league ever been considered for formula e um well, it's about some really good questions and obviously in the times we live these are questions that we we obviously have all ask ourselves um i think you know we're very um new new way of of looking at at sports and a new way of looking at inclusion and diversity um at the at the moment there's no female drivers we have rookie tests where we have some female drivers with the correct licenses um you know qualifications that can can drive these cars um i would love to see you know i come from sailing where we we had mixed uh, yachts as a as a rule set. You know, you had to have a certain amount of male and female on a yacht to go around the world in the Volvo Ocean Race, etc. Um, there's, um, I think, I think we're going to see a change in the, in the near future of where it's going to be absolutely normal having a mixed field or a pure female race or a pure male race. Um, I, I think it's just something that's going to come to this to the to all of motorsports, you know, not just Formula E. It's um, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna probably gonna change very soon. So, yeah. Yeah, and I myself super excited about that. I'm uh, my background is in engineering, uh, so obviously engineering is very male dominated, and so any any way to have you know any field like motorsport as well that's very male dominated especially in the drivers great to see more female represented representation as well um and one of abb's uh abb formula e spokespersons is simona di silvestro and she's the reserve driver for formula e team uh sorry for uh, the, the porsche formula e team um and she's been super great you know there's lots of uh bring her in into events um, and she's been talking to, you know, just the general public and she's been fantastic. And I see her as a great, you know, role model too for, for young girls, young boys and girls, obviously, who, even if they're not thinking about going into motorsports, but just looking at breaking the barriers because her story is, is definitely great. You know, she talks about her struggles and how it's been and entering in a very male dominated area. So I can definitely relate to that because obviously as an engineer, female and engineering, you know, I've had my struggles too. And so she's been super great. So people like Simona um, and others as well within Formula E and, and other motorsport races, it's just so great to amplify that message, just, you know, break barriers and, and get out there and we can do it and increase gender diversity. It's super cool. I would certainly love to see more of that moving forward. A slightly different question about participation here. So we're talking about electric vehicles. And of course, the obvious thing that comes up every time you have a conversation like this is Tesla. Are there any thoughts about Tesla participating in Formula E moving forward? Um, not, not that I know of at the moment. I mean, it, I'm, I'm sure our founder has, has, has had contact with them and they've spoken you know, like with so other many brands that are in the electric space at the moment. And, you know, as it is with 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 motorsports, there's some brands that that like single seat racing, like there's some of them like Rally, uh, like some of them like Endurance. And I think it's for every brand to find out what they want to put on on their on their you know on their brand as a as a quality or as a, as a performance. Um I I don't think at the moment, I mean 
um, anything anything can really happen, you know. But um, there's a lot of other brands, of Tesla. I mean, the Volvo is getting into it. Um, there's um, you know Porsche, which is with us now. You know, they they launched the vehicle. Um, so I think at at the moment Tesla not on our radar. But um, you know, who knows? In the future, you know, they could um, definitely come upon. You know, there's Faraday. I mean, there's all these other brands that are moving around in a very big space at the moment. Eric, I, I'd love to build on that a little bit. So, can you speak a little bit to why it is that manufacturers want to get involved in Formula E? Is it the opportunity to test technology like we've talked a little bit about? Is it just visibility and heritage in motorsport? Is it some combination of those factors? Um, I mean, all respective to my role, uh, I do technology, but I can tell I can tell you from from what I hear from 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 doing this for a few years and talking to some of the the, the team managers. I mean, it's a it's an interesting space to develop, right? I mean, it's a it's an interesting space to take a, a, a electric motor and push it to the limits and learn from it. And this is where the innovations are made that you can make out in the field because you will not go to 14 destinations in nine months and push in a competition as hard as possible. Um, so from a, from an engineering point of view, you know, it's like Stephanie said before, it's a unique application to do this. Um, um, then um there's obviously the space to 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 show that you're out there you know to show like nissan to show mercedes um we have electric vehicles and they are you know they're there it's it's uh you know it's it's a it's a race within an event as well you know we have a massive fan engagement zone where these manufacturers also showcase their their vehicles um you know here's our gen 2 racing car but over here is our commercial car you know and and people start making the connection you know um there's there's a lot of interesting spaces of, of showcasing this technology within city centers um a lot of these car brands are you know part of the industry 4.0 movement or what we're going to call it 5.0 soon um because they're they're getting into different things right they're getting into mobile battery storage they're getting into 3d printing they're they're becoming mobile cell phone units um so there's the innovation of of or there's the motivation to to be global, to speak to Paris, to speak to Hong Kong, to speak to Santiago de Chile. Um, there's a lot of opportunity, and it's it's a it's a great ground um, from a B two C, but also from a B two B and, and B two G to government perspective. Thanks, Eric. That makes sense, Stephanie. Is there a way for anyone to get involved with ABB's technology integration that they're doing with Formula E? Yeah, absolutely. Um, obviously, there's a lot of work that is, is being taken into account and so working on these technology integrations. Uh, so, I mean, there is, if I just think about the, the charging, you know, there's Gen 3 charging uh, that's being developed right now within within ABB. And so actually there's a, there's a, a post that just came out um, quite recently to, to join that team and, and to, to join that, whether it's on-site support uh, that's needed. So there's so many different um, positions uh, that, that are available or will be available. So obviously the best thing to do is, is go on ABB's website. Um, I think there's even a search to do specifically Formula E and that'll just bring up all the posts that have uh, that has ABB Formula E in the title, but uh, absolutely. And and that's just, you know, just speaking about uh, Formula E or ABB Formula E, uh, those types of activities. But in general, I would say, you know, it's no surprise, it's no uh, secret that the whole EV industry or the whole e-mobility industry is, is booming. And it's, it's definitely exciting. I remember, because I started getting into this industry around 2015, 2016, so where it, it, it happened, you know, what was happening in 2015 to what is happening right now in e-mobility is just incredible. Uh, definitely is, is blowing me away and, and getting me super excited and motivated to, to be in it. And so now we're seeing that, you know, almost all types of transport are being electrified or, or uh, you know, reducing their, their carbon emissions right now. And so obviously cars started first and then buses. Now we're talking about electric trucks. 
um, and, and those types of vehicles, but you'll see that there's also marine applications. So ships are being electrified as well, uh, from large ships to, to smaller ships and, and yachts, uh, and then airplanes. So when you're looking at the span of all the different types of modes of transportation, everything's being electric. And uh, obviously as ADB, we have a big part in that. So whether it's getting involved with ADB Formula E technology integrations or just in general in e-mobility, I know I'm super biased to say e-mobility is the best place to be because obviously that's, that's my role, that's my life right now. And I absolutely love it, but maybe that's just- It uh, is Stephanie, it is Stephanie. <laughs> You and we are pretty biased, but just a note to, to anyone in there, especially if there's young listeners, if you're looking to do something that's really cool, and if, especially if you have a, a technology or engineering background, and you want to do stuff to really make an impact and change the world, consider e-mobility. It's, it's really cool. It's certainly a good field to be in. Before we wrap up, I'd love to ask each of you one final question. Looking forward, what excites you about the possibility or what are you personally impassioned by with your work with Formula E? Um, I could, I could go ahead and start. Go ahead, go ahead, There's Stephanie, go ahead first. <laughs> so much to be excited about, um, but I'll say the, the, the one major thing uh, and the one, the big project that I've personally been involved with um, and, and continue to be really involved with is, is Gen 3. So, of course, it's being, it's being developed right now. So just the development, and then when it comes to the testing, and then seeing the races on season nine, so starting 2022, 2023, seeing Gen 3 actually being driven with a driver in there, going around the race circuit, and then getting charged, that's just going to be, for me, like the, the ultimate satisfaction that's going to be really really great i can't wait to see that and of course there's the other technology integrations but i would say gen 3 personally for me i'm super excited to see that realized thanks stephanie yeah, and i mean for, for me it's it goes down a very that's why i let stephanie go first because we're both a little bit engineers so we're both a bit on that um what comes next um for me as well i mean one of my first first jobs when I got the formula was, this is the concept of a tech boat. How do we do this? You know, and we kind of had to come up with a problem, solve a problem of how do we find out the car is passing a zone and give it more battery output. Um, and for me, it's those like, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot set in the middle, in the Middle East, you know, you write down the impossible and you ignore it. And that's, that's a lot what um, happens here as well is that we take some really wild ideas and we, try to kind of break them down to the most important part is you know what's e-mobility about and try to get that on and if you look at you know level five um, autonomy where you don't have a steering wheel and you're not going to talk to a car right so we're going to have to get to a level somewhere where we have a driver that somehow is going to have to interact in a competition with a car possibly without a steering wheel right so um there, there's 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 all these kind of where is this going to go? What is going to be the next level? And obviously some of the predictions are wrong, but some of the predictions are, are, are not even done yet. So I think it's going to, I'm really kind of, you know, it's so fast. This is so, it's just a quick moving space. Um, like if, if we can have this 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 uh, webinar in maybe two years and again, um, you know, we'll be looking at some of the ideas going like, yeah, we never thought this would happen. So. Eric, we're going to hold you to that, man. We will see you both again in two years. <laughs> thank you both so much for your time today. This was awesome. And thank you all for joining us. And we will see you next time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thanks, all. Thank you.